Hello and welcome to a new episode of Pat's Chat. Today I have another awesome guest. I'm really happy she was able to make it. Uh, Shayna Te, she's the co-founder and chief of money at the Food Market Hub. Uh, Shayna, thank you very much for your time and um, to join me today on this uh, episode of Pat's Chat. Yeah, pleasure to join you. So. Yeah, a very good experience. <laughs> <laughs> we will see. Uh, Chief yeah. of Money, it's an interesting title. We come back to that a little bit later. Uh, first of all, as always, I want to know a little bit more about yourself, who you are, how would you describe yourself? Mm, well, okay. Um, I, I would say that I come from a traditional Chinese family where um, I think my parents were expecting me to Uh, take over their business someday. So, um, so uh, I was, um, so, so my path was actually set, like, you know, you need to take accounting business or when you study and then, um, and then come out and then help in the family business. So that, that was, um, that was the time where I, I guess it was already set as an expectation at an early age. So I never really thought of what I really want to pursue until I think when I was submitting my university application, that I, I suddenly felt like, no, I, you know, I'm really interested in design. But I guess my, my, uh, my dad was, was not uh, very encouraging Uh, when it comes to that. So he says, you know what? Mm, he's paying the school fees. Um, I guess I just need to, you know, finish the, uh, the course that he expects me to then. So, so I finished okay. my um, accounting and business law degree in Australia. Mm -hmm. And then um, I, I actually wanted to stay on for a bit to get some work experience, but, you know, Uh, parents and the responsibility so we compromised uh, and and said that okay I will um, go to Singapore to work for a bit get more exposure before I can you know really help out in the family business yeah and and then after you, so, you work so for for PwC and uh, KBMG that was in Singapore Um, yeah, so PwC was in, in Penang. So I was in oh, Singapore nice. for a while. Mm -hmm. And then uh, SARS happened. And my mom practically called me every day to ask me to come back. So then I went back, uh, joined PwC, um, and you know, did my stint there. Then I thought, no, I need a bit more exposure. And the closest place I can get is you know, back to Singapore again. So then I went um, to Singapore uh, um, and worked in KPMG for a bit under consulting um, services. And then, um, then I think my dad started calling and says, hey, you know, um, you have been there for uh, a while. Maybe it's time to, you know, come back. <laughs> yeah. So, so that's, that's my journey back and forth, back and forth, and then back yeah. to Penang. So eventually you, you joined the family business also as an accountant or auditor? Yeah, yeah. So um, my, actually my grandfather had a business. Um, it's in the food industry. He's, mm -hmm. He was a um, wholesaler for dry goods and, um, and canned food. So then um, I wanted to go back to help in that business, but my, my dad has his own um so he was running an <clears throat> accounting firm an mm -hmm. audit firm and he was hoping that i could take over uh and help him out um so he can retire um but i think you know the the guy behind never retires even though they say they want to <laughs> so yeah <laughs> that's the kind so, of family so, business right <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> so then um And so then, um, yeah, so I decided, okay, I will, you know, uh, go through my uh, professional journey, um, finish up my CPA, and then get my mm -hmm. audit license. Mm -hmm. And that was like, you know, that went past like six, seven years, just finally to get the audit license. Yeah, and, yeah. and after that, um, 
I realized that, hey, you know, it, it's, like, it's like one part of the journey where um, I have done it for my parents, for my dad. Mm-hmm. And I realized that, you know, I'm more passionate in really in design. Um, yeah. um, uh, and I, I started looking out for um, businesses that is, you know, that would interest me and take up more challenge rather than, um, you know, sitting behind the laptop and the books to, mm-hmm. um, if, if you see my LinkedIn profile before, um, before I house it, I, w- I, I was actually saying that, you know, I, I didn't want to spend my life verifying my client's wealth. <laughs> I think I want to build my own wealth. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I read that somewhere. Yeah. I read that somewhere. Yeah. So was that like uh, I saw that like for ten years you were basically in the business of uh, auditing and um, yeah. in this in this area, uh, mm-hmm. and then you came up with an idea that uh, seemed to fit quite well what you wanted to do designing. Um, that was uh-huh. shoe designing, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, okay, so the, the concept of that shoe is, is nothing new. It's actually, it existed like way back then. It's just that um, it isn't as popular as published sized in, in Southeast Asia. So I, I was actually um, on a trip in um, Italy. Uh, and, and then when I think we told, I think my husband was, was based in Germany then for, for a while um, mm-hmm. for work. So I so went over to visit him and then we were traveling. And then I saw this concept shoe where they have hidden heels for men. Uh-huh. So, to so make I them thought, hey, taller, you know, right? The, yeah, to make them look taller. Yeah, so yeah. I thought, hey, look, yeah, this, this is something interesting. And, um, and I, I think like, you know, women has always been wearing heels. And mm-hmm. and and we have we are not ashamed that you know we want to look tall. That's why we were wearing heels and look good. And for men, maybe it's a it's a slightly different concept. So I thought this hidden heels will work well in the Asian market. So I went to do research and I found out that there was actually um uh you know a market in Singapore, like someone is selling in Singapore as well and um, in Philippines and, and in China, there were like a lot of manufacturers um, doing that. But when I look into uh, the, the shoes that they have, they are mainly from uh, the you know from China, and those designs are usually huge and bulky and short. It's also so it, it looks very obvious if you are wearing it. Um, and I thought, hey, you know, we can. Uh, redesign it, make it more like the Italian style, longer mm-hmm. sleeper. Yeah. So I, I actually went for the Canton Fair and I sourced for like the manufacturers one by one. We literally go booth by booth. Wow. Uh, so my husband went with me, we went booth by booth. And then, so when we engage uh, one of them, uh, we were afraid that, you know, whether they really exist and we actually, we actually took like the cab all the way to the factory in the outskirts <laughs> just to verify that the factory yeah. was there. Yeah, 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 correct. Yeah, interesting. Then, yeah. yeah, so uh, lucky enough, um, I, I met the, the chief of the, uh, the production design. Uh, he was very helpful. So um, what I did with him was like, we went through the designs that they had and how we need to maybe to, to meet my requirements, we need to reconstruct the whole shoe, get a new mold and everything. And then we went to like, you know, the, the leather market to source for the, the leathers that I require. So, so I basically start from scratch, you yes. know, looking for from all this. Zero design a new brand new shoe, right? That's, that's interesting. Yeah. So, so a Italian uh, design or that you, you liked, uh, the name of the company was Schuster, uh, but written Schuster, in the yeah. German way. Right. Um, yeah, yeah. That that probably came yeah. from like when when you were in Germany. When so, um, yeah. So. That's so, a, so yeah. So the the name. So everyone was asking me, oh, what? How, how how do you pronounce it? Why is it so com- You know, so difficult to pronounce. <laughs> and I thought, oh well, because that time I was in Germany, so I thought, hey, we were googling up 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. Wow. not so difficult. Okay. It's pronounced the same as the English too, right? So in the end, the same, but yeah. uh, a very uh, special name. Um, I, I like the idea, like the concept. Um, also, you showed some picture with your your husband. You 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 used like that mm -hmm. as a use case, right? That uh, yeah. men just want to appear a bit taller, also, especially if the, the girlfriend or the wife is taller, right? Taller, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, correct. So, uh, so my husband was my guinea pig man. Yeah, <laughs> he's actually shorter uh, than I. So I I was talking to him about you know um, how, how does he feel? He says I he never felt that it was a problem, but. When if you look deep down, uh, when you are in a you know in a bigger organization, when you want to do presentation or when you are in sales and all that, sometimes um, like 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 we we'll say first impression do count, and um, you know looking good makes you confident. Mm -hmm. So 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 I started off with the concept that it's not just about um, looking good. So it's more about building your confidence, getting um, tools that help you to build confidence. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So interesting. So a product uh, built on like the mood or the confidence of uh, people, right? I saw the podcast you did with uh, BFM uh, back in 2015. And um, that was interesting to, to listen to because you specifically mentioned uh, about marketing and how the marketing related to the sales. Like once you put money into the marketing, you had your sales are quite good. But once you stopped, then the sales dropped immediately. Um, w was that the reason like that Schuster was not like the success story that you maybe expected in the end or what, what really happened with Schuster in the end? Um, okay, so um, at that time, so marketing is something new to me. I was learning how to do Google ads myself, Facebook advertising, um, writing blogs, and then um, and, and, and also trying to capture, you know, how to, you know, bring out the message because uh, it is, it might sound too crude if I said, you know, um, um, wear my shoes and, and look taller and no, nobody would like it um, because um, I think for men, they, they tend to keep it to themselves. It's unlike women, when you, they love something, they would uh, share it. And, and, and so that, that was the difficult part when I did the marketing. I realized that um, there are not a lot of um, uh, sharing of this, this news like, uh, and it can go viral because someone like it. Um, probably men would say that, hey, look, I like this and I would, you know, keep it to myself. You know, after all, that's why it's hidden news. <laughs> And, um, and I noticed that, um, so I, I spoke to uh, the, the owner from Crocs and he said mm -hmm. that he has a multi-brand outlet that he could, he, he could let me, you know, uh, have my shoes displayed there and to, to sell it and test it out. So uh, when I was, you know, observing um, um, the, the consumer behavior of buying my shoes at, uh, at the retail outlet is that, Usually they would go and, you know, check it out with their friends. Let's say they saw it from Facebook. They may check it out with their friends, but mm -hmm. they are reluctant yeah. to try it on in front of their friends mm -hmm. or to acknowledge that they want to buy the shoes. And then they would come back on their own to test it and then buy it. Ah, interesting. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So to, to capture that psychology and how to market it, I, I, th I think I didn't, uh, grabs the concept well enough to, to learn mm -hmm. how to market it well. Mm -hmm. um, so it was a lot of trial and error, trial and error. Um, but I think uh, so I was lucky to actually manage to get um, retail, uh, dealers, wholesalers in Singapore, Hong Kong and London. Um, and the quantity that, was, that, that they were selling uh, was 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 for a start it was pretty good so as the demand increased um i also faced um the, the capital uh, constraint as well because um, my shoes are all leather shoes and the minimum order is pretty high mm -hmm. and to cater for different sizes and you mm -hmm. know different types and designs yeah. and then with the amount that i need to spend on marketing as well 
So at that time, I was like really uh, earning what I get from um, my day salary and then pump it in into the business. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, I guess I think looking back, um, what I, I, I realized that I did not do well was um, I, I basically want to be very hands on. I did everything on my own. So I, I was struggling, fighting with time um, to do everything myself. Um, because I was bootstrapping, I, I didn't dare to hire people um, to, you know, to spend the money on resources to help me out. Rather, I keep thinking that I can do it myself. I, I, mean, I can do this. I think I know better than hiring someone and then needing to teach them. So I was doing everything on my own and and I think that is one of the pitfalls as well. Mm. Okay, understand. Yeah. Thank thanks for sharing that experience. I think that's uh, very valuable to know and understand also. Uh, let's move a little bit forward um, to to different times. Uh, I read you you were running a couple of coffee shops after that. And uh, basically, the challenge is running those uh, coffee shops. Um, um, like, went to the ideas that you really had with a uh, food market hub. Uh, maybe you can uh, yeah. quickly introduce the process that, that you went through or what happened and what is food market hub also. So, um, well, so after, you know, after Schuster, um, I decided that, hey, look, maybe this this is not uh, the business that I can venture. Passion and, you know, business might be different. Then, uh, then I was still looking out because maybe it's the, um, the, the family background where we always felt like, you know, um, business, um, you know, doing business would be a more secure way than just being in employment. Um, and, and so I, I was looking out for, you know, Uh, businesses to do and I was discussing with my husband that you know hey, we can uh, look into um, maybe restaurants and cafes at that time he was still um, an engineer in Intel and so I, we were thinking of like hey he, he loves to cook I said why not um, you know we can explore and and you know run cafes and then so we did a lot of research and then but It didn't. It sort of didn't uh, uh, materialize that soon because of the cost, and we were looking at the Penang market. I think then after that, um, um, we we had this opportunity to venture into um, a, a, a cafe business. So it was like an internet uh cafe and so mm. from there the little small business it started then it gives us confidence and we slowly expand to you know opening um cafes at, at the outlets and all and we thought that we were doing well because mm -hmm. um when we look at uh sales we look at food we get you know, good reviews and all that but but i i think um it's the The, the food cost management that was not done properly that even though there are sales but we don't see money at the mm. end of the day okay. everything was you know uh, being spent on certain things that we thought that yeah it's crucial for the business mm -hmm. so when where, where did the money go yeah and and we, we reflected and we sat down and we looked into it so there were actually a lot of hidden costs that you know uh, being considered new in the, the F&B business so there were like hidden costs like you know uh, pilferage from uh, employees uh, procurement issues like sometimes we get stuff to buy but um, there were kickbacks you know with the suppliers issues yeah. like that yeah. and then also managing food waste uh, in the kitchen so these are little little things that you you don't see it uh it's not like right in front of you yeah. but you need to but drill they sum down up, and right? into it before you can discover that yeah, yeah. yeah. they sum yeah. up you have so like a couple of small up, amounts it, but material. then it becomes a big one yeah in the end yeah yeah so so that 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 really hit us and then thought so my husband um anthony was the uh, the software engineer and he thought that hey look you know i think i can Uh, build something to track mm -hmm. all this costs to make procurement more transparent 
um, and it would be, you know, a good fit for especially uh, business owners with multi outlets to control and to be able to monitor their costs on a real time basis. And then he started, you know, writing the program and um, pulling in some of um, uh, resources to help him. And 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 when he tested it out with uh, you know one or two FMB owners that he he knows, and they they love it. And so then, that's that's how we you know started the journey nice. to yeah. you know yeah. focus and build Food Market Hub. Awesome, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's a it's a great story. I mean, it basically really the idea really came from uh, what you were struggling with when you run the coffees, right? Uh, the coffee shops, and uh, uh, when you went through the the process on how can you improve that? How can you help? Well, maybe yourself, but how can you help the entire industry to really um, become more lean or like understand where where the money really goes? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so so I, I guess it's it's um, along the way we you know we, we keep having like self reflect and look at ways where we can um, we realize that hey this is this is really a big market and there aren't uh, real direct competitors around that is doing yeah. what we are doing yeah. and yeah. and so then um, Anthony start um, you know going out doing the marketing pitching um, while I handle the back end you know the cash flow um, <laughs> the operations and all that yeah, yeah. yeah you handle the money yeah we said it before you're the chief of money at the yeah. food market hub now you're running your own uh, family business <laughs> I thought that was interesting <laughs> because basically I connected first with uh, Anthony um, I, I saw this uh, awesome uh-huh. post on, on LinkedIn and uh, then I connected with him, uh, asked him for uh, joining the, um, uh, the chat mm-hmm. today and said like, why don't you ask uh, Shayna? <laughs> so first, I didn't know, right? <laughs> you were related. So that was mm-hmm. uh, interesting to discover. Um, are, are you more like the, the spokeswoman of the company or is it more like a time thing or is it like just your preference to do that? Is she more like the... The programmer type well, of guy. Well, I, I guess um, I am. So, so it started off as you know, I'm I um, because he's doing the front end, front facing one. So someone has to you know manage the operations and the money. And so I thought, okay, I will you know be the the person behind looking at the, and he can be the front facing. So he went off to pitch and all that. But I guess uh, with um, you know the 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 expansion plans and all that so looking into strategies and having you know discussion more with the developers because we have now like practically half half of our company's uh, employees are mainly the software engineers mm-hmm. and you know him tying up with that and and so uh, we decided that hey we need to um, so I probably need to come up with um, looking at certain areas like marketing and uh, helping with not just operations but uh, you know, marketing branding and stuff that we can you know uh, try to uh, get more publicity visibility um, so that our customer feels comfortable and you know uh, and know know that we are a stable reliable company mm-hmm. yeah 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 Awesome. So, so I mentioned before um, the reason I I um, became aware about Food Market Hub uh, because I'm not in the F&B uh, industry was really that um, that awesome um, uh, funds that you raised uh, four million uh, USD. That's roughly what seventeen eighteen million uh, yeah. ringgit. Um, yep. An awesome story. Maybe you can walk us through the process, like how that happened. I mean, um, how you started to uh, pitch while your company was already running. The company is three years old, right? You founded in, in mm-hmm. uh, yep. 2017. Like the process of like getting uh, people interested, pitching it, or also looking out for the right partners that help you to to really uh, raise that that money in the end. 
So, um, so actually, the pitching started uh, for me. It started when um, I was uh, running Schuster. So I was looking for government grants, um, trying to get uh, you know grants to help in the business. So when we started Food Market Hub, um, we know where we should get some uh, certain grants that can help us um, to to grow the business. And so, so we, we actually joined like a uh, magic and accelerator program by mm-hmm. the Malaysia government. Mm-hmm. And yeah. it helped a lot as because they coach us how to, uh, how to pitch and give us visibility to the investors. And so that's the journey where um, slowly, slowly um, uh, we are able to reach out to investors. And um, so I think um, we... We, we got a few grants like the Cradle Grant and the MDAC Grant to help us through. That, that, that was really helpful, especially with um, COVID. It actually prolonged our runway. Mm-hmm. And then during, during that difficult time, uh, we were lucky that uh, with the engineers and you know, Brainstorm, we were able to pivot and you know, generate more cash flow. Uh, during COVID by turning our B2B marketplace to a B2C marketplace to reach out to consumers. Mm -hmm. Um, Because initially the marketplace was meant for uh, suppliers and restaurants. Um, But then because of COVID, we we worked with the restaurant owners and the suppliers to lower the MOQs to reach out to the consumers. Okay, interesting. So there it generates uh, enough cash flow to pay salary. Um, and to to extend our runway while uh, Anthony was um, also you know aggressively looking for um, investors um, and we, we did get um, uh, one or two offers and and then uh, because of COVID uh, one one of the investors sort of, sort of slowed down the the discussion with us then uh, then came uh, GV. And, and so they were like, hey, look, yeah, you know, I think maybe it, it works for them. Like they were looking for, you know, uh, a player in the F&B industry. And um, I think we were, we were really lucky that, you know, uh, we, we found them at the right time to, mm-hmm. to help yeah. pull us out from this uh, COVID situation. Mm. So that, that was really a blessing. Yeah. And, wow. and I think Anthony really worked hard to, you know, uh, pitch uh, with the investors. Yeah. Mm, yeah, yeah. Can can you share like how many pitches you you did? Um, I think. Well, I I don't even know how many pitches they have done. But it sounds like a uh, lot already, uh, right? Yeah. Okay. I think for him, it's way more. Mm. Uh, I think he that day he was showing me a list. I think maybe forty fifty. Along wow. the lines, yeah. Then yeah. for me, uh, from Schuster to to Food Market Hub, maybe um, 10, 20. But because um, along the way, it doesn't make sense for us to both do the same thing. We should split our scope. Mm-hmm. So we decided that because he knows the the product in depth, so he should be uh, pitching up uh, more with the the investors while. Um, since yeah. I'm doing the operational, I will concentrate. Otherwise, you know, the, sure. the resources is not enough. Correct. Yeah. So he, yeah. he actually pitched a lot more. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Mm-hmm. So con- congratulations for that. I think it's, a, it's really an awesome story. Um, okay. You got 4 million USDs now. I think now the, the hardest work only starts, right? What is, what is yeah. your plans? What is your ideas? What is next to come? What is your biggest challenges right now okay i think so with with the money coming in there's like expectations from the investors and the target that we need to meet so um i think right now for us is the the first few months uh the internal uh operations in the company oh that one like you know because we are expanding so fast uh, the hiring process is is also one of our challenges where we want to attract uh, a lot more talent. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and as I mentioned before, like because our branding uh, 
previously wasn't as strong as our competitors. So uh, attracting talent is is mm-hmm. also um, a, a fair bit of challenge as well because yeah. we would have like um, candidates that that was asking us how you know how did we fare during the COVID and and I, I even recently I had like response from candidates where it's oh I saw uh, that you managed to raise funds that gave me more comfort that you know uh, I you know um, wow, I, I can join you know uh-huh. the company so okay. hiring uh-huh. yeah is definitely one of the challenges and also yeah. uh, the the internal process the the controls that is in place the efficiency we mm-hmm. need to really fine tune it now as the team grows bigger mm-hmm. yeah so the yeah. um, hiring more talent in to help us is is the the key yeah. focus okay. as well why, yeah. why don't you do a shout out what what kind of resources are you looking for most urgently right now um i think for developers and we are still looking for you know the back-end software developers mm-hmm. i think we recently got a few like the product uh engineers but i think the U, ui ux uh, we are still looking mm-hmm. and then we are also you know hiring um even like down from um the, the creative designer uh the hr coordinator that can you know help build the culture you know with all that so yeah these these are all the positions that we are looking at Finance, actually, we are also looking at, so, you know, for a finance manager, so I can <laughs> relieve some of my um, job there, so I can yeah. focus more on the, yeah. the, the customer uh, success and customer support. Mm, awesome, yeah. A lot of uh, job openings. That, that's great to see companies hiring in uh, these times that we currently uh, go through. What, what is the best, easiest way to reach out to you or the company for job applications? Um, I think um, LinkedIn anytime when they you know they send uh, messages to us to LinkedIn and their resumes or through our website we have our email address that they can you know mm-hmm. drop in their CVs um, definitely we will be looking uh, through uh, calling out for the candidates yeah even even the most informal way like you know PM us through Facebook we 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 also monitor that. Yeah. Okay, awesome. Okay, a lot of ways to connect with uh, Shayna with uh, Food Market Hub. Uh, thank you so much for sharing your stories, uh, your success uh, that is currently ongoing, but also the challenges, the failures that you had, you went through. You learned a lot from from them, obviously, um, to make this company now a very successful one. Thank you very much. Thanks for you know looking out uh, for us to to do this podcast. Yeah, sure. Thank thank you so much. Um, have a great day. Um, have a great weekend soon. And thanks for watching this episode. I hope you liked it. Don't forget to reach out to uh, Shana and Food Market Hub for any job openings, uh, follow them, support them. And then I see you next week for another episode of Pat's Chat. Thanks. Have a great day.